Oh, what's up guys, it's Rogue to here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. So as I'm assembling all the pieces of the latest deck profile, I'm gonna be showing you a brand new trap version of a deck that's already on the channel. It's been mixed with a lot of different engines, but I'm playing it pure now. If you haven't guessed it already, it is indeed gonna be a trap version of just pure Shadows, no Dogmaticas, just because I believe that Shadows on its own in the trap version is powerful enough. So without any further ado, once I assemble all this, let's get straight into the deck profile. So starting off with this amazing deck profile, here we've got triple shadow squimata he is the most important shadow just because he gives you access to every single one and hence why i'm playing him at three four eight two of here we got double wendy because she specials you any shadow out the deck and double aerial because the banishing from the grave is actually very very good against most meta decks this format so double aerial because maybe one gets banished or whatever by like a call by or just gets negated, you'll always have the second one in deck. And Wendy, you can bump her up to three, but two's just been fine for me. For the one ups here, we've got one Beast, one Hedgehog, one Falco, and one Dragon. These are just your utility shadows. Um, they're not as good as the main ones, which is why we play them in multiples and these are one. And yeah, you can just mess around with the ratios here if you don't agree with it. So I think one of each is fine. This gives you a lot of options in the deck, sort of like a toolbox. And for the hand traps here, we've got Triple Nibiru. Um, he's a very good hand trap, but also he's light, which with Shadow Fusion lets you make Construct straight away, which is basically the double positive of playing this card, as well as punishing your opponents for overextending. So Triple Nib, and then just Triple Ash. We all know that Ash is just amazing all the time. Moving on for the spells here, we've got our main fusion spell. It is actually not Shadow Fusion, it is Triple Super Poly. This card's insane. The fact it cannot be responded to is absolutely crazy just when your opponent makes a board super poly just eat it all up and since your shadow fusion monsters just require a shadow and any attribute that you that you know they, they need you can use your opponent's monsters very very effectively that way hence why playing triple super poly for the shadow fusion spells we're actually only playing two shadow fusion and one el shadow fusion because this is a trap deck, we're going to be going first most of the time, and these cards are a bit dead going first, especially Shadow Fusion, because we don't really play that many Shadows in our deck to be using this consistently. Going second is why I left these cards in. Um, Shadow Fusion is just insane using materials from the deck, and El Shadow Fusion just enables your OTKs. Moving on to the traps, we are actually playing Triple Infinite Impermanence. In my opinion, this will be coming back into the meta. Um, this is a trap deck, so why not play one of the best hand traps that is, in fact, a trap in it? Hence why I'm playing triple. People don't really expect this either anymore, so just very nice that way. Can't be hit by call by either. For your Shadol traps here, we're playing Sinister Shadow Games. The ability to Foolish Burial Shadol and flip one is insane. Not once per turn. This gets all your engines started. Do it at the end phase, and yeah, you're good to go. For the another three up here, we've got Triple Paleozoic Dynamiscus. The reason I'm playing three of this is because it doesn't discard for cost. So it triggers your Shadow Monsters and then it banishes it and it comes back to very, very useful card. For two ups here, I'm actually only playing two Torrential Tribute. Of course, you can play three. I was playing three, but I've realized that sometimes you do need your opponents to have monsters so you can super poly them. Torrential and you just get rid of everything and then your super polys are a bit dead. Of course, you can test it with three. Some people indeed prefer three, but two for me has just been fine. Plus I play another card which acts as a third one. We're playing double Dogmatic Punishment. Not only does this card just send Entis, it can send uh, App Clone, and App Clone can get you a search, and then dump, so you can trigger, you can pick up an aerial, dump an aerial, and banish as well after you pop. Just very versatile card in Shadows. Absolutely crazy. You can play this at three as well. Two has been going fine for me. For the one-offs, we've got the one Schism, the one Core, the one incarnation and the one trap tricks so the reason i'm playing the trap tricks is just to give you access to whatever you need this is basically the third torrential tribute um you can just banish torrential and set your torrential when you need it this is just utility you can search it out so monster reborn i want it's in the grave to flip something should all cause actually an insane card that i don't see many people playing this acts as any attribute and when it's sent to the grave recurs you any should all spell or trap so you can pick up your schism hence why i only play one i was testing this at two but opening two is not that great since, you know, all its effects are hard ones per turn. So that is it for the main deck. 40 cards. Let's move on now to the extra. So for the extra deck, we'll play one Bulbasaur Dragon and one Rasta Liger. This would be an access code, but I unfortunately don't have one at the moment. So I'm playing the budget version. 
Um, I have Boral Sword in here just because it does enable OTKs, whereas Actus Code sometimes does not. And that is just the reason why I'm playing both. There's not much more to be said. Uh, we're playing one Celine. She's the only Link 3. She basically just makes you your access code immediately. Make her revive a spellcaster, which the shit dolls usually are, and then just make your access code. We're playing one Cross Sheep and the one Shadal Construct. Um, these are just very versatile Link 2s. This can also be a light target, so you can make her and then she does bring herself back. And Cross Sheep just gives you a lot of advantage, bring, being able to bring stuff back from the grave when you do fusion summon. And for the Link 1, just a gravity controller, just a essential, really. Make your shadow monsters in the extra monster zones and then just make gravity controller and gain their effects. For the fusions here, we got double El Shadow Construct, the absolute beast of the deck. Just the ability to foolish barrel any card, not once per turn. And then when she goes to the grave, add yourself a spell or trap, not once per turn, just crazy card. We got the floodgate of the deck, the reason why you win most games is El Shadol Winder, just the ability to say you only get one, and that's it. You only get one special summon per turn, that is you and them, but you can play under it because you are you are more of a slow deck, more of a trap deck, whereas Dragon Link, what are they going to do with one special summon? For the other Shadol monster here, we got double El Shadol App Clone. Very, very useful card. The ability to just blanket any card forever is insane, just negate their effects. And when it's sent to the grave, can either grab you from the deck or the grave a Shadol and then send one card from your hand to the grave and it does trigger if it is a Shadol, which is why getting Aerial and dumping Aerial is very, very useful. For the last Shadol, we got one Sheki Naga. I play her because she's an Earth and it does come up sometimes. And also she has a very good effect of just negating special summons. So I play, she's also very big. So in situations where you need a big blocker, she's 3K. For the last two cards here, we got one Starving Venom just because two Darks, so we do play Super Poly. And the one Entis for your Dogmatica Punishment just to get an extra pop. This, of course, can be the other fossil guy, Sk uh, Skull Fossil, whatever he's called. That basically you banish him to pop, so you get to choose. But I play Entis instead because it's just the better card. That's it for the deck profile, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy my take on what is the best trap version of Shadol's that I've seen around basically. If you guys have any improvements to make to the deck, let me know. I read all your comments. I always reply to them. I love reading your guys' comments. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. It's time to